Hey friends, I'm Otis Gibbs, and this is the legendary photographer Jim Harrington. He's going to tell you the story behind this iconic photograph of Dolly Parton. Well, Dolly Parton started uh, with, there was a friend of mine who lived in my house. He had dated uh, a musician that we all know, and they had had a rather tumultuous breakup. And he needed a place to live, so I gave him my couch for a while. This is um, over on Shelby Avenue, East Nashville, 1990s. And this friend of mine, he was uh, from Knoxville, good musician. And he started playing with some guys, and um, he was coming in every day, kind of tired. They were practicing. And one day he came home and said, man, you won't believe what happened. And I said, what's that? He said, Dolly Parton came by the garage. And the guy I'm in the band with is her cousin. And he said, Dolly Parton came in and watched us play. I said, that's amazing. So a few, does, a few days go by, and he comes home again. And I'm like, how's your day, dear? <laughs> he said, you won't believe what happened today. And I said, what, Dolly Parton came by? He said, Dolly Parton came by, and she sat in with us. I'm like, no kidding. A few days go by, he comes home again, he goes, Dolly came by and she wants to record an album with us. And I said, you're kidding me. And that's what happened. And she was um, going back to her kind of Appalachian roots, something kind of gritty. And sure enough, she uh, started making a record with these guys and he was coming home every day, just elated, couldn't believe it. So, of course, I wanted to horn in on the action. I said, oh, she's going to need some pictures for this album cover sooner or later, right? And he said, well, you know, yeah, let me ask uh, her cousin who's in the band. So he said, yeah, bring your portfolio by. So my portfolio during the day, and I'll kind of go back, I had this picture. You know, I had all the musicians and the celebrities, but I had some other stuff. And I had a picture of this um, dead possum. One day I was at home over there on Shelby Avenue getting ready to go to Los Angeles to do a job. And I'm battening down the hatches, getting ready to leave, and I look in the backyard, and there's this big mound of gray. And I thought it was my cat, Poopy. I said, you know, Poopy. And I ran out to the yard. It wasn't Poopy. And I saw her skitter off by the fence. It was a dead possum. And I thought, well, I'll deal with that when I get back from L.A. So... I go to L.A. for a couple weeks. I come back, and, um, and I look out there. It's like, oh, yeah, that dead possum. And I went out, and it had been, um, you know, animals had picked at it, and it was just the perfect bones laid out of a possum. If you know uh, Peter Beard's aerial photographs of the elephants that were massacred in Africa, uh, there was kind of an homage to that, kind of an East Nashville homage to Peter Beard with the dead possum. So I thought, oh, I'll get out there with my 4 by 5 camera on the tripod. And I did this kind of lovely study of the dead possum bones. I kind of liked the picture, and it ended up in my portfolio, along with whoever else was in there at the time. So as I'm taking the portfolio over, uh, you know, for ultimately Dolly to look at, um, I was already over there. I said, you know, let me take out this one picture. And I was going to the dead possum, surely not going to get me you know, any favors with Dolly. And her cousin said, no, leave it in there. Just leave your book. It's great. I said, okay. So I left it, and a few days later, I went back to pick up the book, and um, I said, well, you know, did she like uh, everything? And they said, yeah, she liked it. She was going through the pictures. She goes, I like this, I like this. She's going through, and she gets to the dead possum picture. She goes, this is the guy I want to shoot my album cover so I got the job so then I started meeting with Dolly and sure enough because you know she'd gone through quite a few of those airbrush butterfly tableaus you know just Dolly fantasy you know you can't tell what planet you're on these things and uh, so we met and I said you know I don't do that kind of stuff she goes I know it's not why, what we're going to do so you know she's going back to her roots wants some Want something gritty. And, you know, I didn't have to explain to her about me. She just got it. Um, she really, 
You know, I hadn't seen pictures like this of her in a long time. They really were that kind of just over-the-top fantasy stuff. But, man, she was down to do it Harrington style. So, I mean, there was a bit of setup. You know, she was talking about when she moved to Nashville in the early 60s, and she goes, can we get, like, a 62 Cadillac? That's the year I came to Nashville. I said, yeah, we can do that. But otherwise, you know, I went and just found these down in dirty locations, um, north of town, up in Jolton. This place, as I noticed, has been fixed up since, but it was just a um, dirty little gas station, abandoned, I think, at the time, where we did some stuff. But, you know, she had her bus and three makeup people and all this for Harrington-style natural light, no tripod, just handheld, you know, kind of stuff. Oh, I did get a car wrangler who brought the Cadillac. He looked, he was an exact Charles Manson lookalike. <laughs> but he brought this Cadillac and it was just gleaming new, like restored, perfect, just waxed. And I was like, you know, that's not a car these people with these musicians. Because the, the thing was like her and her band. And I shot the band too. She was not going to just be Dolly. She's like, I'm going to bring all the guys. And then I said, well, you know, if you guys are busting it through the rural honky-tonks playing the gig, which is sort of, I guess, the thing we were leading towards. You're not going to be in a waxed museum-quality car. So Charles Manson, he said, never worry. He uh, had this big canvas tarpaulin, and he put it over the car, and he had all this dust on it. He was, like, bringing the fabric up and um, picked it off the car, and the car was completely covered in dust. Then he kind of, like, turned the wipers on, and suddenly he just had this smeary windshield. He had some weak tea or coffee in a spray bottle solution. He sprayed it on the chrome bumpers and the stuff beads up and it just looks like those dots of rust. Manson aged this car perfectly in like 15 minutes. I mean, he was one of the better car wranglers I've worked with. So at some point, she called me back uh, a year or two later to do another album cover. Um, Little Sparrow was the second one. And this one was even more, um, didn't even have an assistant for this one. Um, found this cabin uh, somewhere, I can't ever remember where it was, maybe outside of town somewhere. Photographed her, and just, I remember it being she and I. I. There must have been a hair and makeup person there, but we're just in this cabin doing these very intimate shots. Again, handheld, all black and white. I don't think I shot any color. I used to really piss off people in the 90s because everybody wanted glitzy music row. Um, there was an art director who used to yell at me, like wanted me to have reflectors and just fill all the space up with light, no shadows. And, you know, I'm Mr. Noir shadow guy, so it was always bumping heads. So it was great not to have anyone there for that because there's some dark kind of almost southern gothic kind of darkness in some of those pictures. It was cool. I mean, it was it was kind of cool and dark. We did the, we shot until after dark, just me and Dolly out, shot these silhouettes of her. It was so cool. I just, uh, somehow I thought, uh, I want to get some pictures of her writing. This is the second time in this cabin, and uh, I just lit a candle and had her at this desk on the inside of the cabin. Um... It's turned out to be one of the shots people really like and I like, and it's her writing, because, you know, for all the glamorousness of Dolly and her boobs and wigs and hair and all the stuff, you know, she's a magnificent songwriter. So I'm kind of proud of that shot, because I got her, you know, she's not really writing, of course, but, you know, it reflects on her as a writer. So I kind of like it, and it's just available light, wide open, it's probably... Tri-X pushed to 1600, you know, so it's, it's you know, dirty, gritty film. Like, I, I'm assuming most people would not shoot Dolly that way. They had a lot of lights and, uh, you know, but this was 35 millimeter pushed to 1600, just as, you know, nuts as you can get. And it's, you know, along with the one standing beside the car are my two favorites. It took me decades to think that that might be true, but I think she's so astute. She doesn't do anything by accident, and she's hip. You know, she hung out at the 
factory with Andy Warhol. She's hip. She's been on the gay scene. She's been on like every scene through the 70s, 80s, 90s. Um, so, you know, there's, I think it took a long time for me just thinking I got lucky and, you know, maybe she, but no, I think she, you know, my current theory is that she wanted what I had and she got it. There was uh, somewhere along the way, I was uh, still living in Nashville at, at that point before I left, and I was getting on an airplane to go to Los Angeles. And I was doing the walk of death, you know, when you get on the plane and you're behind everyone, go into your seat, and you're just kind of boom, boom, step at a time, staring at the floor, waiting to get to 34B back there where your economy seat is. But I'm still in first class, you know, just waiting, uh, kind of looking, and I hear, well, hey, Jim. I look over and it's Dolly in first, uh, first class there. I said, hey, Dolly. And I look down the aisle at all the people and everyone's looking at me because I guess it's amazing that Dolly's here, but she's like, well, who is this guy that Dolly knows? You know, just, just little old me. Um, you going to LA? I hope so, Dolly. I didn't want to say, I hope we don't crash because it's a bummer, right? I almost went that way. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and then I get to the airport and, you know, Dolly's gone, of course, but um, I'm waiting for my bags and just these massive, uh, you know, trunks like people used to travel with in the Victorian age, um, just trunk after trunk, uh, you know, wigs and costumes and clothes were coming. They weren't marked, but I went to, there was a porter there. I said, Dolly. If you'd like to see more of Jim's photographs, I'll put a link in the top comment down below. But subscribe to this channel, click the like button, and tell me what your favorite Dolly Parton song is, and I'll see you somewhere down the road. Much love to you.